welcome to a cornucopia of tales and tellers. I'm Simona and today I'm here on my own for our very first solo episode. Alan and David are off to a teaching conference and I can't wait to hear what they've been up to because I know that they were there and they spoke about storytelling and they had a wonderful storytelling night. I know that Alan brought his dictaphone with him and I'm sure he'll have some lovely material to share with us. So, I thought uh, I'd take this opportunity to do a solo episode and to share with you my thoughts uh, about a recent experience I've had uh, and uh, then, of course, uh, share a story with you. So let's start. Recently, I had the opportunity to do a storytelling in nature, my first ever storytelling in nature, and it was uh, absolutely brilliant. So I live in Italy and uh, I'm part uh, of a local environmentalist uh, group. And uh, on the 8th of May, it was Mother's Day here in Italy and the group organized an event uh, for kids uh, and moms uh, or parents or whoever was with them. The event uh, revolved around uh, a book theft. So it worked like this. Our group leader um, showed the kids uh, that uh, there were no books uh, in the book sharing shelves uh, because somebody had stolen them. But there was uh, some kind of track, uh, like uh, uh, like breadcrumbs, uh, you know. Instead of breadcrumbs, uh, uh, this person, uh, this, uh, you know, the creature who had stolen the books uh, had left uh, this kind of breadcrumbs, uh, except uh, they were books. Uh, and uh, they were leading us uh, to a place uh, where there was uh, a book in a bag and uh, there were three moments in this um, event and uh, in the first uh, in the first one after we found the book uh, uh, a local primary teacher read a book out loud uh, to the kids uh, and their parents uh, who were with them and then we walked on and on and on and uh, Since it was an event about books, uh, but I wouldn't be using a book, uh, we had to invent uh, a kind of a scamotage. So so the kids uh, found a bag on a tree and when they looked inside, uh, they pulled out uh, a book. But when we opened it, uh, they saw that... uh, there was nothing in it because, of course, uh, we had thought of something and uh, it was uh, actually a diary I had and uh, a diary I had not written yet. So when they saw this, uh, they were like, oh, there is no story. How, how, can we, how can we read a book if there is no story? And uh, we were like, oh, let's see if it's invisible ink. And we puffed and puffed on the book, but no invisible ink. And then uh, we thought, well, maybe this creature who has stolen the books, uh, maybe this creature stole the words of the story as well. But how can we read a story if there are no words? But I told the kids, don't worry, don't worry. I've already read the story and I can tell it to you. And so I did. So I told them this story and uh, we all sat down uh, in the wood and uh, it was uh, amazing. I'll come back to it later because I wanted to share how the whole event uh, worked. So after I did this part... We went to the third point, still following the books, uh, the book trail. And uh, there was uh, um, an actress uh, who did some kind of uh, dance, uh, um, the tree dance. uh, And uh, we found out uh, that uh, the creature who had stolen the books uh, was uh, um, 
a dwarf, a dwarf uh, who was feeling lonely and he wanted uh, um, he wanted uh, kids uh, to come to him uh, and hug him uh, and uh, he wanted uh, um, because he was missing his mom and so the kids uh, acted uh, as uh, his mom uh, hugging him uh, and f- and uh, showing him uh, that they loved him and so this was uh, the whole structure of the event and uh, going back to the storytelling part uh, it was uh, my first uh, ever storytelling uh, in nature well in a let's say I I had already told stories uh, in uh, a wood uh, and an orchard uh, but it was related to school here it was my first time ever telling a story in Italian first of all to kids uh, to uh, native speakers uh, of Italian because I usually tell stories uh, in English uh, as I'm an English um, as I'm an English teacher and uh, it was uh, absolutely brilliant uh, uh, telling a story in the woods uh, about uh, a tree because the story I told uh, was the story of uh, a wangalima an African story which I learned uh, from uh, the great uh, Tsara of Sa and I'm just feeling so blessed uh, to have been able to share it and uh, as I was saying it was my first uh, ever storytelling uh, in Italian uh, Uh, to an audience so I had already told stories uh, in Italian but just in very very small context and this one was the first uh, big one and uh, it was just so amazing to see how these kids were so involved in the story and uh, they were just into the story they were acting uh, out the story with me, Uh, they were answering my questions uh, and it was just brilliant because um, as an English teacher this is not uh, what uh, happens uh, all of the times uh, that you tell a story because there's a language barrier and although it's uh, wonderful to tell a story in English to see the magic uh, of telling a story to kids uh, whose mother tongue is not uh, the the language you're speaking at the, at the moment when you tell the story it's just so powerful to see how native speakers uh, react uh, to um to the story you're telling and uh, see how that uh, works uh, even outside of uh, language learning and after this event uh, I thought uh, wow this is what I want to do I'm becoming always more passionate about uh, nature and the environment uh, and bushcraft uh, and everything that's connected to it and so I thought uh, well I want to share my experience uh, and maybe somebody out there has something that they want to share and uh, please uh, do get in touch uh, if you have because if you are an expert or really an amateur uh, storyteller in nature it would be great uh, to speak to you um, either on the podcast or outside of course and uh, please feel free to send recommendations and uh, ideas uh, Because as I was saying, I'm really new to this uh, context uh, and uh, it's great, it's just wonderful to be there in the environment uh, and tell a story and see how kids react to that uh, and see how the people were feeling as if we were in the forest, in the actual forest where the story takes place. And we were shouting out up uh, at trees uh, saying, uh, is this your name? Is this your name, tree? So I've blabbled enough, I think. And uh, now I'm going to tell you the story of Awangalima. I'm going to tell it in English, don't worry. 
Enjoy. Long, long ago, the animals of the forest had a big, big problem. It hadn't rained for days, weeks, months. The earth was dry and there was nothing left to eat. The animals were getting skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. So they decided that it was time for them to get together and find a common solution. So they all got together and all of the animals were there. There were tigers, there were lions, there were birds, there were elephants, giraffes, monkeys, snakes, ants, all of them together. And they spoke and they spoke trying to find a solution and suddenly the giraffe said, Oh, I think I know the solution to the problem. There's a magic tree here in the forest and when you call the name of the tree, the leaves of the tree open and all the fruits in the world fall down. <gasps> said the other animals. <gasps> and wh wh where is this tree? They asked the giraffe. Oh, uh, said giraffe. I don't remember. Oh, giraffe, said the other animals. Oh, well, at least I knew there was a tree. At that point, the monkey came forward and said, oh, 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 I, I, I know where the tree is. Oh, 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 follow me. <laughs> and so they all followed monkey and they came under a big green tree. Wow, said the animals. And monkey, giraffe. What's the name of the tree? Uh, said Giraffe. I don't remember. Oh, 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 oh. I don't remember, said Monkey. Oh, Giraffe. Oh, Monkey, said the other animals. Oh, 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 well, said Monkey, uh, uh, at least I knew where the tree was. And so they tried asking all the other animals for the name of the magic tree. They asked the birds, but they didn't remember. They asked the lions, but they didn't remember. They asked ladybugs, but they didn't remember. They asked all of the animals in the forest, but none of them remembered the name of the magic tree. And so they started guessing names. Magic tree! Nothing happened. Mama tree! Nothing happened. Simona! Nothing happened. And they went on, name after name after name after name. But nothing happened. Well, said Gorilla, I think I know the solution to the problem. There are some spirits in a cave, not far away from the forest. We need to send our fastest animal and ask them for the name of the magic tree. Oh, oh, oh. yes, yes, said Monkey, and roar! Lion stepped forward. Okay, I'll go. And everybody looked at Lion. And everybody knew that Lion was not the fastest animal in the forest. But everybody was afraid of Lion. And so they let him go. And so Lion started running and he ran and he ran and he ran and he ran. And he was fast. He reached the spirit's cave in one day. And when there, he entered the cave and spoke. 
Spirits of the cave, speak to me. Tell me the name of the magic tree. The spirits of the cave listened to him and said, The name of the tree is Awangalima. What? said Lion. Awangalima? Oh, what a strange name. We would never have guessed that. And with that knowledge, he started running back to the forest. And he ran and he ran and he ran. And he was running so fast that he didn't see that in front of him there were some scorpions. And he fell into the scorpion's nest. And the scorpions ran on his body. And they beat him and they beat him on his face, on his belly, on his leg, on his feet. And ah! Ouch, ouch, the lion screamed in pain. It was so painful. But the lion started shaking and shaking and shaking. And all of the scorpions fell down. A lion ran to the forest. And when he arrived at the forest, he saw that the other animals had gotten even skinnier and skinnier. And they saw him and they asked him lion do you know the name of the tree yes said lion and what is the name of the tree asked the animals well the name of the tree is is uh is uh i don't remember oh lion said the other animals Oh, but I don't remember because the scorpion... Oh, lion, shut up! Well, said Giraffe, we have to send our second fastest animal. And all of them looked at Cheetah. Okay, I'll go, said Cheetah. And Cheetah started running and she ran and she ran and she ran and she ran and she she was so fast that she reached the spirit's cave in half a day and when she was there she entered and she said spirit of the cave speak to me tell me the name of the magic tree the spirits of the cave listened to her and said the name of the magic tree is Awangalima. What? said Cheetah. Awangalima? Oh, that's such a strange name. We would never, never, ever have guessed it. And with that knowledge, she started running back to the forest. And she ran and she ran and she ran and she ran. And she was running so fast that she didn't see the fire ant in front of her and Ouch! The fire ant started running all over her body, biting her, and ouch! They beat her on her neck and on her belly, on her arms, on her paws, everywhere. And ouch! It was so painful! But the cheetah started shaking and shaking and shaking and shaking. And she got rid of the fire ants and she started running back to the forest again. And when she arrived at the forest, she saw that the animals were even skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. And they all got around her and asked her, Cheetah, do you know the name of the magic tree? Yes, said Cheetah. And what is the name of the magic tree? They asked. Well, the name of the magic tree is, uh, is, uh, um, I don't remember. It's because of the fire. Oh, cheetah, the animals of the forest said. And then Snake arrived. You know, we mustn't send our fastest animal 
we must send our most intelligent animal. And all of them looked at Turtle. Okay, I'll go, said Turtle. And Turtle started walking towards the cave. And she walked, and she walked, and she walked, and she walked. Slowly, she walked, and she walked, and she walked, and she walked very slowly. And the turtle, well, it took her three days to reach the spirit's cave. And when she was there, she entered the cave and she said, Spirits of the cave, speak to me. Tell me the name of the magic tree. And the spirits of the cave listened to her and said, The name of the tree is Awangalima. Ah, said Turtle. Awangalima. And Turtle thanked the spirits of the cave and she started walking back to the forest. Ah, ah, Awangalima, ah, ah. I want Galima, ah, ah, I want Galima, ah, ah, I want Galima. She saw the scorpions in front of her and she went round them. Ah, ah, I want Galima, ah, ah, I want Galima. Look, the fire ants. She went round them. Ah, ah. I want Galima, ah, ah, I want Galima. And she reached the forest. And when she got there, she saw that the animals of the forest were even skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. And all of them got round her and they asked, Turtle, do you know the name of the magic tree? Yes, said Turtle. And what's the name of the magic tree? They asked. Well, the name of the magic tree is Awangalima. And when the magic tree heard its name, all of the leaves opened and fruits started falling down. There were bananas, there were mangoes, there were strawberries, all of the delicious fruits in the world. And all of the animals ate the fruits and all of them were happy and they were never hungry again. And they all knew that Turtle was uh, the most intelligent animal in the world and they all knew that working together they could achieve great things and they all knew that nature is something very precious. So that's all for this episode. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. Bye!